Hey everybody, it's with a heavy heart. I come to you to talk about the UPS Flight 2976. That's a McDonnell Douglas MD-11 freighter, and it crashed shortly after takeoff from Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport on November 4th, 2025. It was bound for Honolulu. It had three crew aboard. I've got the lights turned yellow as a sign of solidarity. May they rest in peace, and may all their family and loved ones be in all of our prayers. I'm gonna break down the videos from what we have so far. There are some eyewitness videos that have shown a lot of different things, so I'll give you my perspective. I'm an airline pilot. I've flown the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A220. So let's dive into the first video. And then later I'll break down the actual airframes themselves and how this might compare to American Airlines 191 with an engine issue and a very similar aircraft. So you can see the left engine, that's a number one engine, is definitely extremely damaged and a big fireball is coming out of that engine just right away. And then what I see are sparks on the number two engine and those sparks are kind of in the back of the aircraft and that's where the number two engine is on the MD-11 freighter. So as you can see right there during the rotation, you've got a lot of different sparks coming out of that second engine as well. So that could have greatly reduced the power needed to get this aircraft to a takeoff speed, a safe speed. And when you can't get to that proper takeoff speed, then you're in a world of hurt and you don't have the airspeed to actually fly. As we can see that big smoke trail behind the aircraft itself, we don't know what caused that yet. We don't know the exact cause. There'll be a full investigation. So we don't know for sure. But as you can see, this thing is struggling to take off. It's using the absolute last brick of the runway trying to get airborne. And then just tragically at the end there, it can't get airborne. And then one more time you can see right there, there's the sparks. It's trying to get airborne and it just can't right there. It stalls, the left wing starts to dip down and then it turns into a massive fireball. And that is just super unfortunate. Obviously thoughts and prayers are with everybody involved. There's injuries reported on the ground as well. And there's a shelter in place order in the vicinity of where the aircraft crash happened. So very tragic there. And we'll step through some more videos. So here's another takeoff video showing what happened in the aftermath when the jet just can't get airborne. So we'll watch as this plays out. There it goes. It's trying to get airborne. It just can't. I mean, it looks like it only got a few feet off the ground. Yeah, very unfortunate there. So that angle right there shows us this thing essentially couldn't fly at all, maybe a few feet up off the ground. And this is a third video showing a dash cam, showing a little bit of footage from a dash cam of someone that was nearby. So thank God they're okay and we'll watch as this plays out. So you can see the gear are still down. It looks like the right slats, those are what are on front of the wing are still down as well. And then that left wing just stalls and it's just not able to fly. But yeah, gear are still down. This thing is definitely still in the takeoff mode, trying to get airborne and it just can't get there. We'll watch one more time. Gear are down and it looks like the right slats are down, but we'll get to why that's important here in a little bit. So this video is showing some of the aftermath of the crash. Unfortunately, it just did a lot of damage to the areas past the end of the runway. That's just gonna happen in any situation like this where the jet can't actually get airborne. So you can see there's parts of the debris of the aircraft that went right into that building, scraping along that, and then we've got the crash area as well. So one of two things happened here. So that could be initial contact from the landing gear and other parts of the fuselage on this building, and then it crashes later. I'm not sure the exact angle of this video right here, or it crashed on the other end of the building and then it threw debris that way. To me, it looks a little bit more like it touched parts of this building first, made contact with that first, and then it went down later. But one of those two scenarios is what happened here. And this is a helicopter view of the crash site just to give us an overview of essentially what happened. You can see just a massive fireball right near the Louisville airport. So it's on the departure end. That's just a very unfortunate scene for that to have happened. And you can see how big of a deal that is for a jet to crash with that much fuel on board, likely hundreds of thousands of pounds of fuel on board. And we'll get more into that here in a second in the video. And in that post crash fire, it is reported that there's more than 200,000 pounds of fuel that ignited. And that's about how much that jet's gonna carry making its way all the way to Hawaii. But now we'll talk a little bit more about the specs of these jets and we'll compare it a little bit to that 1979 American Airlines Flight 191, which was a DC-10, very similar aircraft. And that involved an 
engine separation. And again, a lot of this is just information that I'm giving you from my experience of being an airline pilot, and there'll be a full investigation. So I'll keep you posted as that develops. This UPS aircraft was an MD-11 freighter, and it was built in 1991. It was converted to a cargo freighter in 2006. This is a wide body jet. That's the nomenclature that airline pilots use for these. It's got a 169 foot wingspan, and the length of the actual jet itself is about 200 feet. It's reinforced though, so it can carry 200,000 pounds of payload over 6,840 miles. That's the range of this thing. So we talked a little bit about the weights. This thing can carry over 200,000 pounds of fuel, somewhere even close to 280,000 pounds of fuel, and it can carry a payload of about the same, 200,000 pounds. And it's got a tail-mounted third engine that gives it redundancy as it's doing those long engine hauls. The power comes from three GE CF6 ADC2 turbofans. Each of those produces 61,500 pounds of thrust. Likely you're looking at about 160 mile per hour takeoff speed and then about a 2,000 foot per minute climb. So the MD-11 in this crash evolved from the DC-10 and it has a stretched fuselage. It has advanced glass cockpit displays and it has improved winglets for efficiency. UPS uses these for heavy global freight transport around the world. So the three crew team on this was likely comprised of a captain, a first officer, and a loadmaster. So they taxied to runway 17 right for a standard southbound departure. The acceleration looked normal up until liftoff when we saw what happened with that left engine, that number one engine potentially even separating from the aircraft. And this image is just coming in. I wanna share it with you. It's not a confirmed image, but if this is the case, if this is on the airfield, that would mean an entire engine separation from the number one engine. And when you think of the MD-11. So the number one engine is going to be on the left-hand side, the captain side. The number two is going to be on the tail, the next one to the right. And then the number three engine is going to be on the far right side. That's the first officer side. So if this image is confirmed, you can see clearly that it's separated from the aircraft itself, which is just insane. Definitely a wild situation since a lot of redundancy keeps things like this from happening. So it is shocking for me as an airline pilot to look and see the engine just sitting there on the airfield after this massive tragedy incident. There'll be a full investigation and we'll see if this is actually legitimately what happened. And again, that would mean some sort of a structural failure of the engine or even potentially the engine hitting something because we don't know exactly what happened. But with any type of structural failure, it's just so uncommon that it's very unlikely to see things like this. This is why to me, this is such a shocking image. And before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to the first responders who showed up and they've done everything they can to contain this tragedy. We have to tip our hats to them. Thank you to all those involved trying to do everything they can to protect bystanders and keep this from being worse than it already is. Okay, let's do a quick comparison to American Airlines Flight 91. That was a DC-10 passenger jet. It crashed on May 25th, 1979. It was flying from Chicago O'Hare to Los Angeles. There were 271 people aboard. It was taking off from runway 32 right and the left engine, it was a GE CF6-6 engine and the pylon itself separated and that severed hydraulic lines that controlled the left wing's leading edge slats, those slats that we talked about earlier Earlier, the aircraft climbed to about 325 feet above the ground while trailing a white mist of fuel and hydraulic fluid from the left engine where it had separated. The first officer followed the flight director raised the nose to 14 degrees, which reduced airspeed from 165 knots to the takeoff safety speed, which is V2. That's the speed that you try to get to if you have an engine issue on takeoff. V1 is the speed at which you must abort and be able to stay on the runway. After V1 with an engine failure, you have to continue. So we don't know exactly what happened in the cockpit. Again, that will all be released, but it looks like that engine was struggling. We don't know exactly where it happened. But back to flight 191 and that V2 speed, they were going for that speed because because that's the speed that they could safely climb after losing one engine. But with the hydraulic lines cut from that engine ripping off of the jet, the outboard slats on the left wing, they retracted under the aerodynamic load of the airflow. And that raised the stall speed of the left wing to about 159 knots, and that's six knots above the V2 of 153 knots. So as a result of that, they were too slow to keep flying, and the left wing entered a full aerodynamic stall, rolling until it was partially inverted at a 112 degree bank with the right wing over the left, and then it impacted the ground 
4,600 feet past the runway, about 31 seconds after it took off. All aboard perished in that one as well, plus two people on the ground. So before we compare the actual accident, let's compare the jets themselves. So DC-10 versus MD-11. So the DC-10 had entered service in 1972, had a 180-foot wingspan, it had an analog cockpit, very old. It had older engines as well. And then the MD-11 followed in 1990, and it was stretched out. It was a little bit longer, 200 feet long, 169-foot wingspan with digital glass cockpit and winglets, and it upgraded the engines as well. But American Airlines is 191, that full separation, it severed the systems. So it looks very similar with these two incidents, with that left engine, that number one engine, either fully separating, catching on fire, and basically causing all these different cascading problems that we just covered. So again, if it is confirmed that the left engine separated from the aircraft, then obviously that is a plethora of issues and problems, and there'll be investigations into why that happened. I wouldn't even be surprised that if that is the case, that the MD-11 fleet is grounded for a while while they do inspections on all the different wing spars and all the structural pieces that are keeping these engines on the aircraft. But there will be a full investigation into this and why it happened, and I'll keep you guys posted as this develops. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. Thanks so much. Again, thoughts and prayers with all those affected. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, signing off.